Lisa Thomas, the film's producer. This is Margo, the director. Nikki, one of our film's composer. And Scott Townsend, who we made the film about, who's also known as Thirsty Burlington. Um, Margo, you want to say why, how we made the film? How? Or why we made the film? Margo, the director. Okay. We, we made the film because Scott Townsend has a remarkable story that has tremendous relevance today and I think can be very healing. He grew up a very effeminate boy, but a very talented one, but in a very precarious uh, situation and eventually did turn around his life by actually exploiting his femininity instead of running from it and became a very popular Cher impersonator, the number one Cher impersonator um, in the Northeast. Don't tell the other Cher impersonators. They're getting really upset. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a musical, though. I want you to know that. He's a performer. Um, he performs as, as Cher predominantly. So, of course, it's a musical. But there are other original pieces in it as well. Um, I'll let other people say some things, and I don't want to give away too much. Right. Nikki did one of the original songs. I don't know if she wants to talk a little bit about the... She did the theme song for the film. It's called All That I Am. Sing a little. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, these guys you know, gave me one of the scenes of the movie, and uh, we're looking for kind of the last, um, the last, I guess, piece of, you know, the last scene, which needed a, a song. So um, kind of just told me, you know, about a little bit about Scott's story and where, where it was at in the film. Um, and, yeah, I wrote, wrote one of the songs for it. So tried to interpret that story and kind of where um, that, you know, where the message was at that point. And, um, and you're yeah. performing it for the very first time tonight yeah. with Scott, or Thirsty yeah. rather, at um, Spaff. At Spaff. So yeah. for the premiere tonight, they're going to be singing it for the very first time live at the after party. So that's kind of like a special treat for anybody that makes it out. Yeah, it should be fun. Mm -hmm. and so we're, we're local filmmakers. Um, we've had a relationship with the film festival for, we've been up here around 15 years. We were volunteers, we worked on the, um, the sound system for the panel one year. We, we know the people that run it, we have tremendous respect for the festival. Uh, we attend the festival. It was 95% shot up here and hundreds of people from upstate are involved in it. So it made perfect sense. It just seemed a little bit like a homecoming to bring it to this festival because so many people were involved in this area with the film. And it wasn't like necessarily a shoe in to get into Woodstock because it's a very competitive festival. So the film had to sort of have its own merit to, to, to be accepted. Um, but we've always loved this festival and hoped that, that they wanted to show it and they, they liked the film. So we're like very grateful and honored to be here. Tonight is gonna be incredible. Yeah, the, the, the whole after party that we're organizing for the Woodstock Film Festival is different than like everywhere we go when we bring the film, it's always like a different experience. But um, this is going to be a very unique one in that we're having this huge after party that, that happens right off the back of the screening. And we do do other events at other festivals, but this one's quite unique. So we're pretty excited about that. And the owner of SPAF, Erica Price, has bent over backwards to make this happen. So I definitely wanted to mention her, and her space is spectacular. So we're, we're probably going to have up to 200 people, maybe more, and there will be a Q&A, and many of um, the, the cast and crew will be there. They can, you know, the audience is free to ask whatever they want, and then afterwards there'll be performances, and then a party with a little food, so, mm -hmm. and, a, and a, a bar where people can buy a drink. So it's going to be grand.